hello everyone welcome or welcome back to my channel it's your girl caroline that's me and let's get into the hair like come on this has to be one of my favorite looks of this year so far so in today's video i'm going to show you how i achieved this look take you through the journey of the install from out of the box to my scalp but this is not going to be one of my typical super long and lengthy videos i wanted to do something a little bit different shorten it down for you but still give you some information here and there this is more of a express class i would say you know i don't want to beat you down to death with cons consistent three hour long videos unless y'all like that if you do hey i got y'all now with that said if you're interested in how i achieved this look and want to know more and giveaway let's get into today's video so the hair I'm working with today is from Eunice Hair Company. This is their Kinky Straight Wig. This is part of their newer HD hairline, I believe. So it's more like plucked out and it definitely was plucked out. This is a 13 by four transparent lace wig and they sent me 24 inches of this kinky straight hair. Here is how she's looking straight out of the box. Kinky curly, kinky curly hair or kinky straight hair in general is always super full. Like I believe this is just regular density and it's super duper full. That's one thing I like about the kinky textures. Only thing is sometimes it can be a little bit hard to tame, but I really love these textures because they're so natural and mimic my natural texture really well. Now the first thing I had to do for customization was bleach the knots. I'm just using my Blonde Brilliance Express bleaching powder with 20 volume developer. Since this is, you know, an express class, I'm not going to go too in depth on the whole process. But as far as tips and tricks for bleaching, I always say the consistency is the most important part. So I always pour the developer in slowly because you don't want it to get too runny because when it's too runny, it's going to start to bleed into your knots. So pour it in slowly. I usually just keep mixing it until I get a spreadable, creamy texture that is not dry and draggy. Something like... I don't know, buttercream frosting or like a, a yogurt. Once I get my desired nice creamy texture that's not runny, I'm using a little wooden popsicle stick to go ahead and bleach the knot. You can use anything to apply the bleach, just nothing metal because metal does oxidize the bleach, which is gonna cause it to react faster or not even react at all. And another tip and I always say with bleach, you wanna get a good amount of pressure to push it to cover up those knots but not too much where it's in the hairline, but enough for it to actually like cover up the knots, like not just sit at the bottom of the lace. Once I have completely covered up the lace with the bleach, I put some foil under to let it process faster. And I let this sit, this wig in particular, it sat for about 45 minutes before I had to wash it out. I always say every wig is different, so set a timer, don't just leave it and forget about it. Set a 15 minute timer, keep checking it. You want the knots to go from black or whatever dark color it is to a blonde brown color. And you can always tell when your knots are bleached when you flip the wig under and it's like orange under. That's how you know you've bleached the knots. But anyways, so now I'm just going ahead and shampooing out the knots and I am using this neutralizing shampoo. This is like a standard neutralizing shampoo that you get in your relaxer hair kit that turns, the foam turns pink when they're still bleach or relaxer in it. So I just keep washing the lace and the hair through to the foam turns white to make sure I've washed everything out. To tone my knots this time, I wanted to try something different. I've always used a blue and orange, I mean blue and purple shampoo to cancel out the yellow undertones. So this time I was kind of trying to save time. So I was like, what if I mix the blue and the purple shampoo together? So it canceled out both orange and the um, orange tones at the same time, instead of doing it the way where I used to um, shampoo, use each shampoo at a time. So I just poured a little bit of both into my mixing bowl, stirred together and I put that over the lace like I would like, you know, the bleach. And actually this really worked. The knots were completely toned. I did not have any orange or yellow undertones after this. I let this sit on my lace for about, I let it sit for about a good 10 minutes and I feel like I'm definitely gonna be doing this again. Now I'm just trying to make sure I'm washing all of that pigment out of the lace. And here I'm trying to show you, I don't know if it's showing up on camera, but the knots, they, they bleached really well and it toned very nicely. So definitely do try mixing your purple and blue shampoo if you have them. I got these from Amazon. They come in a two pack, the same brand. I'll link it down below. But I'm just trying to make sure I'm properly washing the pigmented shampoos out of the lace because if you don't wash them out properly, you can stain your lace with like a blue purpley tint. 
Once I was done washing the lace off camera, I did go ahead and let the hair sit in some conditioner for a minute. I think I kind of let the bleach stay on the lace for a little bit too long because the hair was shedding just a little bit in the front, but that's because it really, I was trying to bleach these knots. So that's kind of the, the downside of bleaching your knots. Sometimes it can cause shedding, but I think the conditioner really did help it because after that, the hair was back to normal. After I bleached the knots, I did go ahead and pluck the wig. The wig itself was slightly pre-plucked in the front, like the baby hairs and stuff. It had a very natural hairline in the front, but it was a little bit dense in the back, so most of my plucking was focused towards the back of the hair. Unless you guys know, or if you don't know, I do like to pluck upon something white. So I'm using just that white tissue paper that comes with your wig to pluck on top of. And then before I can even start plucking, of course, you got to press that hairline out. I'm using my hot comb on 500 degrees Fahrenheit, so she's really nice and hot. And just, you know, pressing everything back so you can really see those roots standing up. And it's just a whole lot easier to, you know, pluck your wig when you have the hair pressed back. Once I have my hairline pressed back, as you can see, I can really see those knots and I can have a good look at the hairline. I'm using my very crusty but very sharp and useful Revlon Diamond Series Slant Tip Tweezers. These are one of my favorite tweezers, actually the only tweezers I use to pluck my wig. And like I said, it's not a very super in-depth detailed videos, but if you're looking for a detailed slow down walkthrough tutorial on how I pluck for my beginners out there, do go ahead and check those out and I'll link them below. But because I can't leave y'all hanging, here's a little express version of plucking, basically some tips. So I always, like I say, pluck behind the hairline. As you can see, I parted out the front of the hairline first. So that way I start plucking behind that, especially with this wig because it came pre-plucked. When you pluck in the front, I notice, especially for me, I start to get lots of bald spots. So I mainly focus my work on the back to thin it out. And when it comes to plucking, I try, try to think of I'm creating little gaps in between the hair. So I basically, I pluck, a, I pluck a line, skip a line, pluck a line, skip a line. This way you're like creating little gaps in between. Here I'm creating really thick, wide gaps for this wig. I wanted this wig to be very plucked. I wanted to look very natural. So my gaps are going to be bigger. But if you don't want a very plucked look, then don't make very wide gaps. And another thing, do not pluck in the same space. Like it might look like I'm plucking the same area, but I'm not. I'm probably just taking my tweezer further back into the hair. I never pluck in the same area. Like I pluck, skip, pluck, skip, and pluck around randomly. Cause when you pluck in the same place, you're gonna make a bald spot. You're trying to thin out the hairline, not create bald spots. Once I am done working my way down for this half of the hair, I pull all the hair back to the front and depending on how plucked I'm going for, I do either, sometimes I will do no plucking at all in the front because I want it to be less plucked. Like I always, that's my other tip, less is more when it comes to plucking on your mannequin. Like you don't have to pluck all the way for it to be perfect right now. You can pluck more post install. But like I was saying, for this look, I wanted to go for a very plucked look. So I did go ahead and pluck the front to really get it to look like scalp. But at the same time, when I pluck in the front, I try to make sure the gaps are not as wide as they are in the back, so I make them a little thinner. And even here, I'm not really plucking directly in the front of the hairline. It's kind of more in the back if you really look at where my tweezers are pulling. And last tip is make sure you always pull the hair from the root. You're pulling out the knot. You want to make sure you're not leaving any hair behind. Like get into this hairline. It was definitely getting plucked. I feel like it's a kinky curly. I mean, why? I mean, kinky straight hair. I really wanted it to be as natural, like my scalp as possible. I don't know about y'all, but my hair, it's a little thin in the front, so I wanted her to match me. But that was it for plucking for this side. Like I said, y'all, if you're a little bit confused, you want to more slow down. Like I promise you, it's so slow down that you might even get annoyed. Slow down tutorial. I have them and I'll link them down below where I'll explain how I work my magic. But now let's get to the rest of the styling. Once I was done plucking, it was time for me to go ahead and press out the hairline because I know for this look I needed it to be super flat and this was a kinky straight wig. So the texture, you know, it's going to need some pressing out for it to be really, really flat. And like I always say, for you to get a flat wig, you have to take your time and go in section by section and press it out. 
here to help me press my hair out i'm using the care care wax stick normally i don't use this wax every section of the hair because it can get it greasy but since this texture is more coarse i'm okay with using it on every section so it can really you know help press the hair out since it's very dense the hair can take this wax essentially i was giving this wig a whole silk press so i would go in with some wax on the ends and then i would go in with the hot comb on 500 degrees fahrenheit press the roots straight and then going in section the frontal section of the hair i'm using my flat iron on 450 degrees as well everything i'm using is really hot because i want to get this hair as straight as i can and as flat as i can and i'm just going really nice and slow and this was good enough to get the hair nice and straight the main thing I wanted to note when it comes to getting a good press for pressing out the wig nice and flat, when I'm putting the wax, I'm being very intentional and I'm putting it mainly on those knots, you know. It's not about getting the hair per se to be flat, it's about getting the hair from the roots. So I put the wax right on those knots and my hot comb, I'm trying to show y'all right here that I really make sure I glide it over and then I am pressing down those roots, not just the hair. That's how you get the wig to be like actually very flat. So I just wanted to take a moment to show you guys that. After I'd press out all the hair in the front, the frontal, I went ahead and started straightening the hair. I really had to do this on the mannequin because it's the only way I can make sure I'm getting the roots of the hair because I really wanted to get this wig to be as flat as possible given that it's kinky straight hair. So I did use the hot comb on the roots of the hair and I also used a little bit of that wax on certain parts of the hair. Not everywhere because I don't want it to be super greasy, but just some places to kind of really help give that pressed, silk press effect. After pressing the hair out, I gave the ends a nice little chop and trim just to really clean them up because hair always just looks a lot healthier and fuller and it just looks more cleaner when you have your ends cut, so I always cut the ends off. Because I knew what hairstyle I was going for, I decided to just start styling it on the mannequin because it's going to be a lot easier. So I have the hair sectioned out for the two side parts and the hair pressed to the back. Hi. So it's the next day, right? And I was trying, I was trying to finish the install and the style, but I was having the hardest time getting a good grip on the ponytail. I don't know, I suck at getting good ponytail grips. So I was like, you know what? I'm just gonna take this wig off and continue styling it on the mannequin head like I was doing before. Styling on the mannequin head, honestly, it's just so much easier. Cause I can see everything. Like, if you're someone like me who's just super perfectionist with everything you do, can I be missing pieces? So yeah, right now I'm just trying to like get the ponytail together. Like the ponytail don't even have to be that perfect. It's just, I wasn't getting it tight enough. It was looking lumpy and I didn't want a lumpy ponytail. Okay, now let's get into installing it. Here is a reinstall tutorial that you didn't know you wanted, but you needed. I did tint the lace yesterday, so I'm not gonna do that right now, but I always tint my lace wigs with my Maybelline Fit Me foundation in the shade, shade of Warm Coconut, and I just put that under the lace so the lace is an exact match of my skin tone. Boy, I need to get my hair done so soon. All right. <sighs> Oops, let me be careful. I forgot. I have a ponytail situation going on. See, now, why does this look ridiculous? How am I going to do all that work? Hold on, I'm trying to cut off all this random ass extra lace. So, reinstalls are very straightforward. I just, you know, lift the lace. I have all these little, my braids are so crusty. I'm trying to, like, push back my real hair. Because I don't want it to come out. 
And I just spray it under the lace. Always make sure you're distributing that product around. And I try to get, and once I've done that, I put it back down. For the sides, sometimes I gotta like spray on top as well. Like in between, you're gonna try to spray mainly on the lace, not the hair, just to help, you know, getting all that extra residue and build up into the hair to get crunchy. Once I've sprayed it, and then my blow dryer, I like to blow dryer and like whatever flat comb I can find, some flat thing, I just push it all down and lock it in. Okay, same thing on this side. Sometimes I'll spray on top if I can't lift the lace, like right here, so I'll spray on top. And just make sure I'm using my fingers to spread that product around. Um, before I fix my baby hairs, I'm just going to put this elastic band on everything just to give the lace a minute to sit and simmer. All right, now while the lace is sitting and simmering, I'm going to take this opportunity to just sort out these two, the back ponytail pieces right here. To do that, we're gonna get our trusty old got to be. Got to be is a great hairspray for styling your hair, not for laying your lace. Like it's a great spray for styling. Alright. So let's press these out. Oh. Without burning myself. I'm over here messing up my beloved ponytail. And I want this to be as flat as I can get her. I'm just gonna spray some got to be. Got to be's gonna hold her real nice and flat. I'm using this like hard brisk brush to just brush everything down like so. Brush it real nice and flat. That's the name of the game. And then it goes behind my ear. That's this piece. Same thing for this side. Spray her down with some got to be. Her a good little brush down. Nice and flat. I feel like that's why I don't braid. I can't braid hair. Like other hair, you know, like other hair that's not part of the section you're working on gets intermixed in. The part that you are working on and you start losing everything that's my thing because i'm trying to okay hold on let me just take a moment to section out the hair that's not part of this <sighs> this hairstyle is really not that hard but it's like <laughs> it's taking me forever elastic bands and then we're going to tie these two shoddies to the back I'm as tight as I can get them to be. Because the tighter it is, the flatter it's gonna be. All right, cool. All right, that looks pretty flat, if you ask me. Purr, purr. And now let's fix the baby hairs. Ooh. Okay. And now I'm just combing out these baby hairs that are all hard and crunchy from the spray. 
and I just gently comb them out to help loosen them up you know Ooh. have mercy I use my little flat iron my mini iron from Amazon to just recurl them up a little bit oh they're so short I don't want to burn my forehead oh, that was a weak ass curl uh, uh. beauty is pain for real okay other one I'm just doing little weak curls. <laughs> These are not my best curls. I just have burned my forehead so many times recently that I'm not even gonna risk it. Until lay the baby hairs, you already know, Miss Eco Styler, she's the one. And we're just gonna swoop them back up. Come on guys. Get in the club, get in the car. like adding a little inverted baby hair swirls and I feel like inverted baby hairs are just a lot more easier to do than standard regular baby hairs I don't know why You know what? That's good enough for now. Come back to them. These days, I don't even like to stress myself over my baby hairs. I just get them done and we'll figure out the rest. Okay, so I went ahead and did my makeup. Cause you know, I just feel like the makeup finishes me look. Ooh, I don't know if I like it with it hanging short like this. Like I made it shorter. Or I want it long. But let me show you how I did it basically. So like I was showing y'all earlier. My camera died and I was trying to explain everything. I literally just twisted the hair in a bun. If you want it longer. I'm going to do less of a twist. Right? So I twisted like a little bun. And then I'm using one of these little. Banana style clips thingy. And I just clip it. Right on top. Like right up here. Just clip it. And this is how it looks. If you want more of a longer, I think I want it longer. And then I just flip it back like so. And you gotta like play around with it. Like I was, oh, oh, oh. See, I ain't clip it right. She wasn't secure. See, I should have just left it alone. I was trying to show y'all what I did. Oh my god. See, now I messed up the look. Okay. And then, yeah. So this is how it looks. If it's longer, it's not neat though. I have to like, I don't know, like it long or short. Mm. I think I like it shorter. Yeah. Shorter has more like a little attitude to it. So, to make it shorter, take the clip out, literally just twist it one more time around, like so, and then you get the little clippy, clip it under, and then flip it out. Yeah, I think I like it shorter. It's like more spiky this way. And now I'm gonna like tease it to make it like have that spiky look on purpose. I'm just gonna back comb it at the roots right here. Hang around with it till it's falling in the shape that I want it to fall. 
I'm just like trying to fluff it out, give her some sass, and then use some of that got to be to like spray it in places so it can st stay sticking up a certain way. But just like a light mist. I need to be centered in the middle. It's not in the middle. Okay, and now to make the part pop, I'm gonna put a little razzle dazzle. Stomach hurts. I'm gonna go ahead and put a dab of concealer. Let's put some concealer in the middle just to make the part pop. Yeah, y'all see that? And then let's blend that out. Just putting mascara over the part too, just to make it more straight. Okay, here we are with the finished look, and I'm into it. Like I like it a lot. Like it's definitely giving exactly what I wanted to give. Like I don't know. That's why I even like went ahead and wore silver today, so I can give it. A grunge vibe because the hair is getting like grunge pop like it's like rock star to me so I was like okay I'm gonna wear like my rock star clothes which means just wearing silver honestly got my little silver earrings and stuff and my shirt just like super cool I don't know I got it from AliExpress but yeah oh this is so cute it's fun as far as the hair all that silk pressing I did the hair is already like poofing back up this thing about kinky straight hair like it like to stay in its kinky texture like, it's already poofing up, honestly. This is fun. I like it like this. This works. How y'all feel about the look? Y'all like it? Y'all dig it? Yes, no, maybe so. Now, with that said, we've made it to the end of another lovely install. So, it's time for me to bid you guys adieu. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. And... Editing Caroline here. I'm currently editing this video. I'm about to post it on the New Year's. And I just realized this is my last video of 2022. I wanted to say Happy New Year's to everyone if you're watching this on New Year's. Shout out to us. Shout out to you. You made it to the end of the year. I don't know. This year has kind of, I felt like I've gotten really closer to you guys and gotten to just put myself out there more and also hear a lot from y'all. And I just, I don't know. I just feel something close with us and I'm just really happy that I have that it makes me just feel like I'm not doing this for no reason. I also wanted to take a moment to like just also mention the last giveaway because I haven't did the giveaway for this video. So for a chance to win this exact wig but a brand new version of it. So yeah, so comment a goal you have for next year. Like I want to get a fatter ass. You do that. Oh, and then also comment a, a type of content or just video suggestions, something that you'd like me to do in the future so i can kind of you know give me some ideas of what to do for the next year i'll just pick at random i'm going to use like a random comment section generator thingy i'm going to pick the comment section from now so from december 31st all the way to january 2nd monday to give y'all give y'all a chance and i'll just pick at random and of course you know rules are you have to be com you have to be following me subscribe to me because you know this is for my girls if you're not following me then you know my one of my girls like why would i give back to you you know what i'm saying Anyways, let me stop rambling because it's come a whole thing. But happy New Year's to all of you. Shout out to you. I'm proud of you. I'm proud of me. We did it. And if you're spending New Year's alone, don't worry because am I. Like this New Year's, I'm chilling at home. Like really, I'm in my bed. I'm editing. I'm about to make me a mood board. I'm manifesting greatness into my life next year. Like next year, this year is my year. I already claimed it. It's my year. And it's going to be your year too. It's going to be the best year you had, the best year I have. Even if it's probably not, let's be delusional. Be delusional and say it's going to be. So I'm praying and wishing the best 2023 into all of us and as me as well. And, you know, yeah. So with that said, peace out, Girl Scouts, and goodbye.